Good morning, Surrender Youth Group. It's good to be with you and share God's Word. Today we're going to be in John 7, verse 40 through 53, in a section I call Jesus Brings Division. On hearing his words, some of the people said, Surely this man is the prophet. Now Jesus had just offered the simple gospel, and some said he was the prophet. What prophet? In Deuteronomy 18.15, Moses promised, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers, and it is to him that you shall listen. God promised to put his words in the prophet's mouth, and he promised that this prophet would say all that God wanted him to say. Some of the people in the crowd thought Jesus was this prophet. Others said, He is the Messiah. Still others asked, How can the Messiah come from Galilee? Now all good Jewish people were eagerly expecting the Messiah. Even the lady from Samaria who met Jesus at the well was expecting Messiah. Still some people wondered about where Jesus was from. Yes, Jesus was an awesome teacher and preacher, but he was a Galilean from Nazareth. He can't be the Messiah, can he? Does not scripture say that the Messiah will come from David's descendants and from Bethlehem, the town where David lived? It's amazing how much scripture knowledge the people actually had about the Messiah. They knew where he was to be born and what family he would be from, but their hearts couldn't see Jesus as the Messiah. Thus the people were divided because of Jesus. Luke 12:51 records Jesus saying, Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. This is what is happening here. Jesus is dividing the people. Some wanted to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him. Now these are people in the crowd who wanted to seize him for the Pharisees. They knew how they felt about Jesus. But God wouldn't let anything happen to Jesus until his appointed hour had come. Even the Pharisees were scared of an uprising because of the Galileans that were there at the feast. Finally, the temple guards went back to the chief priests and the Pharisees, who asked them, Why didn't you bring him in? The temple guards were sent out near the fourth day of the festival to arrest Jesus. They had heard Jesus teach for at least three or four days now, and they never found an opportunity to arrest him. So they came back empty-handed. The Pharisees asked, Why didn't you bring him in? No one ever spoke the way this man does, the guards replied. Jesus' words have power over people. Jesus is a very influential person. It would have been impossible to separate Jesus from his audience who were under his command. Jesus spoke deep truths in simple, powerful language. He spoke with authority, as a messenger from heaven. Even the temple guards were not used to anything like this. You mean he has deceived you also, the Pharisees retorted. The Pharisees were angry. They were being sarcastic, and they were mocking the temple guards, saying, You too have been carried off by this new teaching. Have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed in him? Jesus couldn't possibly be the Messiah if we haven't believed in him. Jesus isn't educated or trained as a rabbi, and now he is teaching a new religion. We are the most educated, and we have the highest positions, and we say he is a liar. They were too intelligent to accept Jesus. Paul says that not many wise and noble people are called. A person's status or intelligence can get in the way of belief. The great and the intelligent often find it hard and are unwilling to receive Jesus' truth. It was amazing that there actually was a Pharisee who believed in Jesus, but they just didn't know it yet. No, but this mob, who knows nothing of the law, There is a curse on them. These people who are like a herd of animals who don't know the law, don't read their Bibles, and they don't go to rabbi school, they are cursed and even given over to a strong delusion. Their opinion of Jesus is worthless. The Pharisees couldn't prevent the people from believing Jesus, so they attacked their character, 
by accusing them of knowing nothing and under God's curse. God chooses the foolish things in the world to confuse the wise. The poor and humble class is a better judge of what is truth in religion than the great and intelligent. Christians who convert today from Judaism are familiar with the curse spoken of here. Nicodemus, who had gone to Jesus earlier and who was one of their number, asked, Does our law condemn a man without first hearing him to find out what he has been doing? John always mentions Nicodemus and his cowardly visit with Jesus at night. Because he was a ruler of the Pharisees, he would never visit with Jesus in the daytime. God's grace can reach any person, even in a group of people who hate Jesus. Nicodemus believed in Jesus and now he stands up for Jesus. There is always a lot in Sodom or a Daniel in Babylon just like there was a Nicodemus in the Pharisees. One of their number, but not one in spirit. It isn't fair to condemn Jesus without hearing from him. He is becoming a real disciple and a true believer in Jesus. Jesus has friends in the oddest places. Within the ruling Pharisees, Nicodemus stands up for justice and fairness for his friend, Jesus. They replied, Are you from Galilee too? Look into it, and you'll find out that a prophet does not come out of Galilee. Now the Pharisees were really mad. Have you, a ruling Pharisee, now joined the Galilean party? Do you support this Galilean prophet? Are you two like best friends? All Nicodemus said was we need to be fair, and they started mocking him in anger, telling him to read his Bible again. Look at the passages that mention Messiah, and see for yourself the prophet doesn't come from Galilee. Although great prophets like Elijah, Elisha, Amos, and Jonah came from Galilee, the prophet, like Moses, wasn't to come from Galilee. Even though the Pharisees attacked Nicodemus, they couldn't deny that he was correct. Then they all went home. Now this little tiny verse has been added over the years, but I think it was added to teach that God can use one person to influence an entire group. Either that or they needed a way to end the scene of the festival. There are three things to take away here. One is how useless knowledge in religion is without grace in a person's heart. The people knew where Messiah was to be born but they were blind to the fact that Messiah was among them. They never received Jesus, believed in him, or obeyed him. Religious knowledge is important because it's hard to worship an unknown God, but knowledge has a way of puffing people up and making a person proud. Even the demons know God and tremble and remain demons. A person may know their Bible, memorize it, and even talk theology but remain dead in their sins. What we need is heart knowledge, and that is a gift from God. The second thing is how amazing it must have been to hear Jesus speak publicly. Even the people sent to arrest Jesus were so amazed by his speech that they wouldn't dare touch him. They said, we never heard anyone talk like him. Jesus taught with authority, and it communicated deep truths with simple methods like parables. Jesus was able to call out national and religious sin boldly while still being loving at the same time. This would have been a sight to see, or at least hear. The third thing is the slow speed at which God's grace works in some people's hearts. Nicodemus stood up for Jesus even though all his friends hated him. Eighteen months earlier, Nicodemus met Jesus at night, and he knew nothing about him. Now he speaks up for Jesus. It may take a while for some to come to faith in Christ, even longer to speak up for Jesus to our friends. It is better, however, to move slow than not at all. Even if your faith is small and is growing slowly, think about Nicodemus, who eventually will prove to be a better disciple than Judas. So even if your friends hate Jesus, don't be afraid to speak up in his defense. 
For one thing is for sure, people are going to be divided about him. God bless you guys and have a good week.